to just remind everybody that tonight is a great night for charity. All the money raised here will go directly to me, which will go towards securing Anthrax as the opening slot on the next art bed. So thank you. Tonight, we're here to celebrate a man who has proven to be wonderfully mediocre at recreating other people's songs on guitar. <laughs> Mr. Zach Wilde. But, but, before we skewer the living shit out of my little Zappy boy, let's take a look back at his very impressive career that Ozzy and I created for him. <laughs>
waited this long to be disappointed. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the wild man himself, Mr. Zach Wild. that's come out to roast you tonight. <laughs> this is a celebrity dais. Wow. Who forgot to put the word celebrity in quotes? <laughs> I'm sure you can also see the exact same people Friday, Saturday, <laughs> and even Sunday signing autographs to no fucker at NAM. <laughs> It looks like the worst Ozfest lineup. But fuck, but fuck, the kings of comedy in a steel cage match. Now, speaking of butt fucking, Jim Norton comes to mind. He is a professional stand up comic. Norton realized he wanted to be a comic when he saw Richard Pryor's stand-up. <laughs> well, mission accomplished, because Jim, you also look like you were burnt in a crack fire. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Scott Ian. <laughs> claims to be a foodie and will only ever eat gourmet food at home or on the road. Considering he's been divorced twice, we know he definitely doesn't eat pussy. <laughs> now, in wrestling, thank you. In wrestling, Chris Jericho claims to be the best in the world at what he does. Chris Jericho has wrestled some of the all-time greats. Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, The Rock, and even Stone Cold Steve Austin. But Chris is probably best known for wrestling with his own sexuality. <laughs> got Jim <coughs> Fleming time. <laughs> Jim, <coughs> whatever your fucking name is, once dated Robin Quivers from the Howard Stern Show. I know, she's fantastic, but you know what? It proves once again that when you go black, you go to VH1 Classic at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ryan Hussein, did I say it right? Hussein, yes, a very funny gentleman. How come Corey Taylor has to wear the mask and you don't? <laughs> seriously, I want to know, seriously, how do you get to, on TV with a fucking face like that. I tell you, even I wouldn't shit on it. But anyway, moving on. Corey. Many people know that Corey Taylor almost joined Anthrax as their new lead singer. But then he figured he could play to a half empty room just fine by himself. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Split the money with four guidos and a fucking Jew? <laughs> now, look, we've got the fabulous Lita Ford. She's here. <laughs> no, fuck me, she's dead. Oh, yeah. oh. 
Sorry, it's rock legend. <laughs> Duff McKagan. Hi, Duff. And now, to talk about one son that didn't come from my vagina, because if it did, I would have left the fucker in a dumpster. <laughs> Mr. Zach Wilde. Okay. For the last 27 years, <laughs> Zach has toured the world countless times, recorded dozens of albums, and taken five showers. <laughs> he smells like a biker bar bathroom. Whenever he comes over to our house, I hope and pray that our dog shit on our floor. <laughs> a children's book personally I don't think that's a good idea I don't think that Zach should be around kids at all <laughs> if I had a little boy or girl now I wouldn't leave them with Zach for five fucking minutes I personally would feel better dropping them off at Pete Townsend's house <laughs> and I, I would cover them in sugar and maple syrup and I would let Pete lick it off now I know that one was just a little low, but it's Zach. <laughs> you deserve it, Zach. You deserve everything you're going to get tonight. Thanks, Mom. Congratulations to my little Zachy boy. <laughs> now, now you've been roasted. You're finally grown up, and you know I love you because I'm your mum, and I'm proud of you. I love you. Now, even though Zach is a right pig, he does have some friends. Though not all of them could make it tonight, could they, Zachy boy? <laughs> but some of them were kind enough to send you their greetings. And some of them are actually famous, like in the first video. So let's cut right to the shack for something out of this world. Hollywood star here, wouldn't you? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't be with you berserkers and society-dwelling motherfuckers tonight in person. Priceline doesn't offer direct flights to shitholes like Anaheim. And I don't do layovers. I tend to avoid scenes like this with so many hangers-on, or as I like to call them, Klingons. <laughs> and what am I up to, you ask? Well, I'm hard at work promoting my newest record release, Seeking Major Time. Mm -hmm. All of you rock fans know this is my greatest artistic triumph to date. The album is loaded with guest appearances such as heavy metal luminaries as Deep Purple's Richie Blackmore, Allison Chains' as Mike Inez, and MC5's Wayne Kramer. Did I mention that it's available now? On Cleopatra Records, you can Google it, you can even Bing it, it's up to you. I don't give a shit. I'm so classically metal that I even chose to reinterpret the Black Sabbath classic Iron Man to be part of my masterpiece. But to do it right and capture the spirit of Shatner melded with metal, I needed a guitar player of a certain stench, if you will. <laughs> and we all know that there's only one six-string god that comes to mind when you think of poor personal hygiene, am I right? That's right, Rock Bitches, it's Zach Wild. How did he get the gig, you asked? Was it his virtuoso guitar talents? No, no, no. His worldwide celebrity appeal? <laughs> Teeth brushing? Habits? Good God Almighty, surely you jest. No, 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 no. Zach Wilde had a certain something that those other guitarists didn't have. A truly hot-ass wife. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> oh, Zach, it's fantastic. For you? Let me just say, this keeps up, we might be recording an entire box set together. <laughs> Love it. Oh, and now, Barbara, get back down there. You little metal minx. Mm, set your face at a fire. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> oh, boy. 
have a little blast at your roast. Zachy, I'll be here. Right here. The <laughs> Pueblo. since we got up here. Jesus Christ. Please give a round of applause for a very funny comedian's last minute replacement. <laughs> Jim Norton. Thank you. Excellent music cue as I get to the microphone. How about a nice hand for Sharon Osborne? Clap for Sharon! <laughs> Standing up here just being fucking horrible comes naturally to you, doesn't it? <laughs> what a great location to have this. I hope you enjoyed your pigeon and mashed potato dinner. <laughs> fucking shithole, it smells like feet in here. <laughs> <laughs> and William Shatner, I mean, uh, such a legend, and Zach, you played on his, uh, his record. Getting, uh, uh, hiring Zach to be on your album to make it better is like vomiting on the carpet to get the shit smell out of it. <laughs> what an amazing lineup, though. I mean, you know, of course, with Zach, and we have Duff McKagan, and we have Scott Ian. I mean, this is an amazing event in 1994. <laughs> What the fuck am I doing here? I feel like I'm in the green room of where are they now? <laughs> what a shitty collection of people in this. If a fucking bomb went off in here, the record industry would lose exactly $500 next year. <laughs> and Brian Posehn, uh, thank you so much for climbing down your beanstalk and joining us tonight. <laughs> You look like somebody took a shit on a Picasso and then blew it up with a stick of dynamite. <laughs> Chris Jericho, uh, an amazing athlete. But Chris, if I want to see a grown man in his underwear trying to impress a 10-year-old, I'll hang out in the park by Brian Posehn's house. <laughs> I don't get wrestling. I mean, it has the redeeming value of child porn, although in child porn, the fighting is real. <laughs> Oh, sorry, too rough? Oh, fuck yourselves. <laughs> Scott Ian, Scott, you look like Ben Kingsley eating a raccoon. <laughs> the name anthrax makes me think of terrorists, not because of the big disease scare, but because they blew up fast and got everyone's attention, but now all they have left are 72 virgins. <laughs> Scott's father-in-law is Meatloaf. So it turns out Meatloaf will do anything for love, including letting his daughter marry a goat with leukemia. <laughs> and Scott was on uh, I Love the 70s. Yeah, so did I, because it was before you were on TV and making music. <laughs> and uh, Jim Florentine, uh, one of my oldest friends, host of that metal show, if you haven't seen it, it's so fucking awful, it makes the talk look watchable. <laughs> What's your criteria for interviewing people? They have to be out of public view for 20 years? Nobody wants to hear from a guy who is a session basis for Faster Pussycat. <laughs> That metal show, it looks like a bunch of gross guys standing around at a gangbang that the girl backed out of. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> and of course, Duff McKagan, I'm, I'm happy you're here with uh, so much talent. I'm surprised you haven't tried to get a shitty super group together. <laughs> Duff, you look like Gary Oldman's sister. <laughs> Corey Taylor, Corey, you wear a mask and a convict jumpsuit, and uh, no one can understand what you're saying. That doesn't make you a singer, that makes you a hamburglar. <laughs> if wearing little jumpsuits and Halloween masks while screaming and shitting yourself was all it took to get noticed in the music industry, my six-year-old nephew would have four Grammys by now. <laughs> and Sharon Osbourne would have six. I, I really do love Sharon. Honestly, you are the sweetest monster I've ever known. <laughs> uh, your show, The Talk, it's a hit, and I say that because watching it makes me want to do that to women. <laughs> How did they come up with the idea for The Talk? All right, look, we want to do The View, but we want the women to be more annoying and less fuckable. <laughs> <laughs> A roast of Zach Wilde by Guitar World Magazine. I mean, the only thing that could be better would be roasting anybody else for any other magazine. <laughs> the good news for Guitar World, if anybody in the room signs up, you can double your subscriptions. <laughs> and uh, I love everything you did with Ozzy, except all that garbage after the ultimate sin and before Scream. <laughs> Not only are you not the best guitarist in this room, you're not even the best guitarist with a beard on this stage. <laughs> you look like a Viking. You're Hagar the Horrible Musician. <laughs> oh, Actually, I have a good idea. Why don't you change the name of your band to Brian Posehn's Cock? <laughs> simply because you guys are rarely washed and you haven't performed for a woman in 15 years. What <laughs> a fucking drunk. That red face in your booze gut, you look like Dog the Whiskey Hunter. <laughs> this motherfucker, he actually petitioned to be on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Talk about confusing your fans. First of all, they're like, what, Zach is a star? That move was harder to comprehend than Ozzy reading Shakespeare through a drive through speaker. <laughs> You're such an alcoholic, Lemmy tried to do an intervention. <laughs> How do you get kicked out of Ozzy's band for being too drunk? That's like getting thrown out of Hitler's house for too many Jew jokes. <laughs> And uh, I guess to sum it up, uh, you guys were much more enjoyable. You really are a nice guy. You're a bit of a babbling ass, but a really nice guy. If you fucking want to talk to Zach, set aside six hours and fucking catch up on your reading, because it's not going to be an interesting conversation. Ah, I'm telling you, man, the old lady went down to call the war. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Nobody knows what you're talking. Do you notice whenever you talk, people just time it and go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> They're hoping you die. Fucking blood clots and you had to wear orthopedic pantyhose. Very heavy metal. You have the same medical history as Betty White. <laughs> but I will say, uh, I have to say thank you so much. In all, you know, honesty, I, I, I fucking adore you. You really are a legend and a genius guitarist. And man, you've entertained me for 20 years. And thank you so much. It's an honor to be here with Sharon and with you. And I, I truly do love you very much. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's your old pal, the metal guard, Rob Halford. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there tonight, but my bike, yes, the bike, is in the shop. And if it wasn't, I'd be roaring around the stage, probably falling off like I've been doing recently. I hope you're all enjoying the chicken or the vegetarian option. Tonight, I really want to address my old friend, Mr. Zach Wilde. 
Now, much like in ancient Greece, the gods of Olympus would appear and speak to mere mortals. In rare occasions, some gods would even tour with mere mortals. A great example of that was the recent Judas Priest Black Label Society Tour. Every night, those hairy humans got to rock alongside true deities of rock. But enough about the greatest heavy metal band of all time, Judas Priest. I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you personally, Zach. Being on the road with you night after night, you start to pick up on certain things, behaviors, mannerisms, tics, habits, traits, and yes, faults. Now, I'm not sure if it's your giant oversized muscles, the legions of your all-male biker fans, your fascination with leather, or all that Elton John consistently pumping from your tour bus night after night, but I have to tell you honestly, it's all coming up as extremely gay. <laughs> Seriously, Zach, this is heavy fucking metal. Right, so on behalf of myself and Judas Priest, could you please do us all a favor and man the fuck up? <laughs> Thank you. And good night. You know what? Watching that, he's definitely got another thing coming and it's gonna be all over his fucking face. Will you? <laughs> No, were you all thinking what I was thinking watching that video? I wonder how many dicks he's had up his ass. <laughs> Halford, not Zach. Halford, what do you think? I can now. And you know what? That's why his breath tastes, well, smells and tastes of shit. Okay. <laughs> well, that went down well. Fuck you now. And now, please welcome a man with the box office appeal of Paul Hogan, the wrestling talent of Hulk Hogan, the musical talent of Brooke Hogan, <laughs> Chris Jericho. Come on! You know I got you! Yeah! Wow, it's one of those nights, is it? My goodness. Thank you for having me, guys. Good evening, everybody. Uh, as we all know, we are here to uh, roast an overrated guitar player who's cocky, arrogant, and has a shitty beard. But I'll get to Scott Ian later. <laughs> Sharon, uh, I'm really glad that you could be here to be the roast master tonight. And I was just curious, did you take the Santa Ana freeway here all the way, or did you just ride in on your broomstick? No, I'm just kidding. We all know she wrote in on Ozzy's coattails. <laughs> I mean, look at this dais. What a crew. These people have OD'd, died, and come back so many times. This isn't even a roast, it's a seance. <laughs> and speaking of The Walking Dead, Scott Ian, right there, made a cameo on the TV show Walking Dead. Seriously, Scott is one of a kind, honestly. He's the only Jew in the music business who's never made any money. <laughs> but at least you have some friends who have made a lot of money in music. I mean, look at Metallica. You've known them from the start. You helped them out with food and gave them a place to stay when they were broke. So how cool was it that they took you on tour last summer as a tax write-off? <laughs> But honestly, seriously, Scott, I'm really glad that you're here up in the dais tonight. Anything to keep you from making any more crappy music with the members of Fall Out Boy. And speaking of gay, Jim Norton is here. Yes. A man with a face for radio and a cock for trannies assholes. A man so ugly, comedy was his only option in life. I mean, look at you, man. What a fucking mess you are. Now I know what the aborted fetus of Don Rickles would look like. <laughs> Did you know Jim Florentine discovered Jim Norton, gave him his big break in comedy? 
My question is, since when is one unknown hack comedian giving another unknown hack comedian a blowjob in the back alley of the Chuckle Hut considered a big break? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Posting, stop reading your notes. I'm up to you now. Brian is a big comic who loves metal. And everybody is always saying how ugly and gross Brian is, but I disagree. Even though he is repulsive and disgusting, he reminds me more of Big Bird with a big 70s porno bush on his fucking face. <laughs> Brian is so ugly, he has to get completely drunk before he can masturbate. <laughs> his muscle tone is so bad when he sits in front of a computer, people mistake him for Stephen fucking Hawking. <laughs> Who else is up here? Duff McKagan, the nicest guy on the panel for sure. Of Guns N' Roses and Velvet Revolver, very impressive. And I just want to say, dude, in the 80s, you were fucking hot, man. You really were. You looked like a pudgier Melanie Griffith. <laughs> and now you look like a skinnier Crypt Keeper. <laughs> Duff is not the only big name here. We also have Corey Taylor from Slipknot, right there. Yes! Now, even though Corey is a big-time rock star from the middle of bumfuck Iowa, he stays close to his white trash roots. He still brings his uncle out on the road with him to molest him. <laughs> I'm seriously, I know you're multi-talented. You wrote a book, I read it. And that book has so much wasted ink in it, Jesse James tried to fuck it. <laughs> And Kat Von D tried to marry it. <laughs> and Zach, the man of the hour, the man with the power, the man too sweet to be sour, right here. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Zach, this is your night, brother. I love you. You're a great guy. I mean, you're a guitar god. And with that gut, your god is obviously Buddha. <laughs> Watching Zach solo is wa like watching him have sex. He plays with himself for 20 minutes, and when he finally climaxes, he's the only person experiencing any pleasure. <laughs> but really, Zach, I love all your songs. Or as I like to call them, mediocre Aussie tunes with shitty vocals. <laughs> Zach, I mean, what happened to you, dude? I mean, you went from looking like a hot 18-year-old chick to looking like somebody who rapes hot 18-year-old chicks. <laughs> I'm not saying you've gained weight, but you're a pair of smart glasses and a bad comedy act away from being Brian Posehn. Fuck, <laughs> oh, man. Seriously, what's with that beard? I mean, God, man, actually, you know what? I know why you have that beard. It hides all the skid marks from licking Ozzy's ass all those years. <laughs> Truth be told, I actually like Zach's beard. Her name is Barbara Ann. <laughs> In closing, I just want to say thanks to an amazing guitar player who has his own unique and influential style took the great Ozzy Osbourne to new levels musically and is loved by metal fans all over the world. Let's hear it for Gus G. <laughs> Seriously, brother, the bottom line is, the bottom line is, the bottom line is, brother, we fucking love you. This is your night and please take a fucking shower, okay? Yes, thank you. Tell me when you're ready. Zach, how did you make this happen, dude? I just have to stop by and say, what's up, man? You're getting roasted, boasted, and toasted today by a ton of people. Hopefully, they're treating you somewhat kind. But I just wanted to say, dude, when you were on Idol last season, dude, with James Durbin, you came out and rocked and wrecked the stage, dude. Mr. Zach Wilde, it all comes together. Yeah. Oh, God, dude. You know, started a little rough for me. It's like, it doesn't have enough. Ugh. 
but it just wasn't really. It was just kind of boring. It's really just okay. Uh, keeping it real. Keeping it real. I'm telling you what, you brought the house down. I know you came out and you were thinking like, where the hell am I? What is this? Is this Little America? Yes, you've reached the middle, the masses. You've reached the mother load. Do you mainstream? Zach, mainstream. What? No, mainstream. Zach, mainstream. mainstream. Enjoy yourself, Zach. Hopefully they don't rip you too much, dude. Then. Um, Randy was actually planning on being here tonight, but then he remembered he was black. And well, he didn't want to risk it, did he? Bless him. And now let's bring out a man who has most likely jerked off to most of my husband's records growing up, Mr. Brian Posehn. <laughs> Sharon. Yay. Oh, she's awesome. You know, when I was a kid, I thought Black Sabbath was super scary. Then I saw Sharon Osbourne. She looks like Pumpkinhead fucked a hockey player. Then had horrible plastic surgery. Yeah, right. I mean, Sharon is a monster now, but have you seen her in the fucking 80s? She looked like a fat dyke that ate another fat dyke. She is super fat, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Not a lot of thinkers. Uh, pretty obvious here. Super bummer, one of my heroes that uh, Ozzy couldn't make it here tonight. Uh, I think he's funny, but a lot of people say, hey, Ozzy Osbourne's no comedian. But I always defend him because his Michael J. Fox impression is impeccable. <laughs> Too far? Michael J. Fox isn't here, you faggots. <laughs> oh, Chris Jericho. Comedy's hard, huh, buddy? Stick to sucking at everything else. Fuck. <laughs> Chris Jericho, athletics apparently run in your family. I didn't do research, I'd never heard of you before today. Uh, your father, Ted Irvine, was a hockey player for 15 years, and of course, you're best known as a multiple time world wrestling champion. So between the two of you, no one's ever actually won anything that's real. Chris Jericho is to wrestling as, sadly, Chris Jericho is to metal. The only, thing fake, the only thing more fake than Jericho's wrestling is his band, Fozzie. No one even knows Fozzie in America. They're only popular in Europe and Asia and other places that love shit. Dude, you're the Ingve Momstein of shit. <laughs> Speaking of shit, Corey Taylor's here. Corey, of course, is a member of the Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. He's, of course, the versatile lead singer of both Slipknot and Stone Sour plus a few other bands that sound exactly the fucking same. <laughs> you know, if you buy a Slipknot album on Amazon, it suggests that you might also enjoy being fat, living in a trailer, not knowing your dad, and cutting yourself. <laughs> yeah. Suck it, Slipknot fans. 
Corey, you know, he's my buddy. He's actually a great guy. He had a pretty interesting technique for recording the last Stone Sour record. I don't know if you guys read this. Uh, he put a Slipknot CD in a blender, added five parts water, two parts boring, three parts garbage, and then hit the three doors down button. <laughs> See, because they suck super hard. <laughs> They're not fucking metal. Jim Florentine, my buddy. Man, this is so awkward. Jim, we uh, asked you to fill a seat out there, not up here. <laughs> On that metal show, Jim's the funny one. But that's like being the least annoying Kardashian. It doesn't mean dick. He still sucks super, super hard. Anyone would be funny next to those other two useless ball bags. I'm kidding, man. Jim is actually one of the three hosts of the metal show, and he's also one of its seven viewers. <laughs> Florentine, I don't know if you know, is known as a cringe comic, which is a, a new type of comedy invented for comics who can't make people laugh. <laughs> and Jim Norton, speaking of no laughs, uh, people always say I look like a serial killer or a baby raper, blah, 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 blah. I hear it all the time, from my wife. Uh, but I can still say with all sincerity, thank fucking God I don't look like Jim Norton. They say beauty is only skin deep. Bullshit, even Norton's soul is ugly. Jim's a true metalhead, and that's because of the steel plates in there, huh, buddy? Jim's misshapen dome is famous, mostly because it appears in medical textbooks as an example of fetal alcohol syndrome. If you listen to Opie and Anthony, uh, kill yourself, and uh, you also know that Jim has horrifying stories about fucking trannies. And every tranny he fucked has a worse story because they fucked Jim Norton. <laughs> Duff McKagan's with us. Uh, I keep, sort of. Uh, Duff must think there's a shitty reality show being filmed here because that's all he does anymore. <laughs> Halloween was three months ago, dude. When are you going to return that Iggy Pop costume? <laughs> so, I actually love Duff. I hate being mean to people. <laughs> but this guy, I don't mind being mean to. What a fucker. Scott Ian, my good friend. The beard, the eyebrows, the nose. The only Jewish stereotype Scott doesn't follow is success. <laughs> he is a risk taker though, he gambles. He got into poker for the money. But that's like getting into anthrax for the pussy. Because <laughs> there's none, it's all fat dudes like me. Scott, according to the VH1 documentary, which is fucking awesome, Metal Evolution, anybody? Yeah! yeah fuck. You created rap metal. So wait, you're responsible for Linkin Park and Limp Bizkit? On behalf of everyone in the room tonight, I say fuck you. And the beard. It's become your thing. Your stupid, smelly thing. I liked it when you had it braided with those two little horns, which would really should be on the top of your head. Because you're evil, get it? You fucking dirty Jew. Uh. Still, as big and dumb-tarded as your beard gets, it will never be as stupid and big as Zach's. The only thing bigger than Zach's beard is the payday you're going to inherit when meatloaf croaks. You. you guys like meatloaf? You're gay. <laughs> Finally, Zach Wilde, the reason we all drove down to Gross Anaheim. Uh, well, that's not true. I came down for 1500 bucks and free booze. Uh, when Randy Rhodes died in 82, I really missed Randy. And then I heard Zach, and I really, really missed Randy. 
I mean, I never thought anyone could replace Randy, and I was right. You blow. Uh, Zach, how does it feel to have a career because someone with more talent died? <laughs> And your style of guitar playing, ugh. Recognizable, maybe, but, uh, fuck, those pinch harmonics are as subtle as a wet fart. <laughs> a woo! A woo! You sound like you have Richard, a little Richard in your guitar, or, uh, some other old gay black guy. I've heard a lot of stories about Zach. The guy was a serious partier, partier before he hopped on the let's pound a case of O'Doul's train. <laughs> Zach's doctor told him that if he kept drinking, he'd be dead. And somewhere, Jakey e. Lee was praying, just one more drink, just one more drink. <laughs> what the fuck happened to that asshole, Jakey e. Lee? Who knows? Look at those arms, he's a fucking beast. I feel sorry for his guitars. He looks like a caveman fucked Chris Holmes. He makes Carrie King look human. Shit, <laughs> he's gonna kill me, God damn it. I love you, bro. <laughs> and that fucking badge of Medal of Honor, beard, it's ridiculous. I think that's where Jakey e. Lee is. <laughs> he's, he's hiding in his stupid goddamn beard. <laughs> I'm surprised you guys don't sell official stick on Black Label Society Zach beards. Because fuck, you guys sell everything else. Black Label vest, belt buckle, hot sauce, and even fake tattoos. Bro, you put your name on everything. You're like the Gene Simmons of white trash dipshits. <laughs> but totally for real, man, I can't even believe I get to be up here. I've been a fan of this dude since day one, and he's one of, this is one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to do. I'm such a metal nerd fan, as a lot of people know, and I can't believe a fat, nerdy fanboy like me even gets to be up here with you guys. And uh, you're one of my favorite guitar players of all time, and uh, this is true, I named my son Rhodes. Uh, after Randy. Uh, no, it's true. But only because wild posting would sound gay. <laughs> you rule, my friend. I'm fucking thanks for having me, you guys. Thanks. Shout out to my buddy Zach, man. Going through rehab with you was probably the most exciting part of my life because. Is it supposed to be anonymous? No, no, that's that's another program. This is just uh, rehab. He's talking about Zach. Yeah. Oh, I personally I liked Zach better when he was hammered all the time. Yeah. Remember when Zach one time you threw when you got on stage and jammed with us and you hit me with a big Heineken bottle? <laughs> I didn't know your stupid song. <laughs> you no, nope, you didn't remember that, did you? <laughs> Zach, you were so funny when you were hammered all the time. You used to threaten people. Be violent. I like you. In yeah. your big chain. You remember when you were used to drink a lot and you were still skinny? That was fun. Dude, that is because you knew enough deep in your heart that when you drink that much, you got to do a lot of cocaine to off balance it and shit. Yeah. Is it true you live in a cabin? It looks like you live in a cabin. What's like in your beard? Is it like a nest? It's a big if you beard. look really deep in his beard, you could find Lita Ford pussy chunks in there. I bet you could find Captain Caveman. Wow. Lita Ford Pussy Chugs? Yeah, yeah. That's a killer album title. <laughs> Lita Ford Pussy Chugs. That sounds like a, that sounds like a snap. Hey, I'm going to 7-Eleven. Do you want something? Yeah, give me some Lita Ford Pussy Chugs. Yeah, oh. just one bag or two. Get the cheese kind, too. <laughs> They're really filling. I only need one bag, bro. Don't get the onion flavor. I didn't like those last oh, time. Oh, man. The Lita Ford <laughs> Pussy Chugs. For the natural flavor. Yeah, that beard's got... If that beard could tell some stories, I'm sure it would. But we're just kidding, because we know beards can't talk, so we're not stupid. Well, this, he's not stupid. Happy birthday, Zach. Yeah, happy birthday, dude. Dude, way to go, dude. 21's a big day. You happy don't look good. a day past 50, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm just with a sweet I'm kidding. He's gonna fucking I'm kill kidding. you the next time if he's drunk. No. 
he would never beat me up. He already told me straight up. He said, I will never punch you in the face, man. You're too good looking. <laughs> Whoa, that sounds a little gay, dude. <laughs> oh, well, then he goes, hey, hop on my bike, cupcake. I'm like, what? Cupcake? That's a little weird. It was really weird. Oh and then I'm like sucking this dick. I'm thinking, this is awful. Okay, yeah, that's, 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 that's what that's, 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 that's Two men doing that, that's, that's gay. Yeah, that's it, it was weird, but we were listening to you. Not for him, though. That was not gay to have that guy suck your dick, because he looks like a woman, but... But you were being gay by sucking on his dick. Yeah, right. I was wondering at that point. I can only imagine what that thing smells like, too. Like it a smells beard. Like, no, it smells like Lita Ford's pussy. I'll bet you. Oh, Lita Ford pussy chunk. Lita Ford pussy chunk. Yeah. Get, get, back get, it, get it now and store it. That sounds like her greatest hits. Oh, yeah. my pussy God. chunks. Anyways, we're Steel Panther. We are here. Happy Rock. birthday, buddy. Yeah, happy, happy birthday, Zach. We love you, man. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God, poison have aged horribly. And who was that twat at the back with the lip gloss on? He looks like he sucks so much cock. It's hideous. Anyway, all righty then. Here he is. Meatloaf's son-in-law, Mr. Scott Ian. Wow. <laughs> By the way, Chris, in America we say dais, not dais. Chris Jericho, why are you here? A guy famous for fake fighting. I mean, I guess it's appropriate because we are here to honor the fake Randy Rhodes. <laughs> then there's Duff McKagan. A few years ago, Duff went back to college. Imagine college kids trying to outdrink Duff. I mean, they're doing beer bombs and Duff is using a power washer to shoot vodka up his asshole. Because he drank a lot. Jim Norton, my friend, you killed. You, you killed. Thank you. That was awesome. Jim Norton, you are proof that even a comic with absolutely no talent can end up a complete failure. I mean, there's a company that makes a product designed to repel him. It's called Norton Antivirus. <laughs> and I hope you all have it installed because the last thing you want to end up is dying of sadness. <laughs> and Brian Posehn is here. <laughs> you might recognize him from the cover of Gigantic Rapist Magazine. The only exercise that slob gets is when he's being chased by villagers with pitchforks and torches. <laughs> and now to the man of the hour. Zach Wilde, my friend, since 1988. That's a long, I mean, it's a long time. So I figured, you know, we go back a long way, we have all this history. I figured I was gonna use some visual aids for my presentation for you, Zach. And of course, visual aids is also what you get when you watch Jim Florentine on that metal show. <laughs> you unwatchable lump of shit. <laughs> look at you, Zach. I mean, look at you. So young and full of promise. If you could go back to that time, take a time machine back to the teenage you, you would beat the shit out of that faggot. You know, as a young musician, Zach hitchhiked all the way from Jersey to L.A., blowing minds and truck drivers. <laughs> Next up, 
we have an extremely rare photo. I mean, it's really amazing that someone had the foresight to document such an important moment in music history. Here's Zach auditioning for Ozzy. <laughs> Ozzy hadn't seen that much hair since the first time he went down on Sharon. <laughs> it was probably in the 70s, right? Makes sense. You know, Zach tried to donate his hair to cancer children. But they said, don't we have enough problems? Now you want us to look like fags? <laughs> oh, look at this picture. <laughs> Speaking of 1988, here's Zach when he first met Anthrax backstage. At first we were excited. We thought it was Farrah Fawcett wanting to blow us. You know, most music, you know, music, guitar playing, it's based on the diatonic scale. This is a fucking guitar nerd crowd, Nam, whatnot. Diatonic, do, re, mi, so on. But you know, Zach's playing, it's less diatonic and it's way more gin and tonic. But um, psh. We're all very happy for you, Zach. Getting cleaned up, going through rehab, living sober, that whole thing. Nobody's happier than you quit drinking than the pants that you would piss into every night. <laughs> and in closing... Sorry, bro. <laughs> it is hard, Brian. <laughs> they put the musicians between the comedians, so I guess there would be dynamics in the set. So in closing, Zach, you know, if you can have a fake bike club, well, so can I. <laughs> the Black Dreidel Society, the most profitable biker gang in the world. So all that being said, it's an honor to be here, my friend. You're an inspiration. You are a true original. And as our, uh, as our mutual friend used to say, get your pull. Zach! Zach White! Where is he? There you are, you son of a bitch. You promised! Never leave me locked up on the tour bus ever again. How could you? All these years, you've never written one single song that makes me want to destroy and kill things. Your stuff is only good to put me asleep. And about this road, Zach, Christ, it's embarrassing. Are you trying to tell me that we are that desperate for a goddamn nail. It's getting to the point where I'm going to have to wear a costume to even be seen out in public with you. <laughs> yes, Zach, <clears throat> Warrior Man here. Looks like you and I have the same excellent taste when it comes to role models. Appreciate that you've been a huge Ultimate Warrior fan all these years. I've been a fan of yours, your life, your career, your music for just as long. An even bigger fan and admirer of your kick-ass attitude, your creativity, your Ultimate Warrior-like courage and confidence to go out and cut your own path in your life. Keep on taking your own unique brand of power out to the world, man. It makes the world a better place. I am all the other warriors who keep listening and paying attention. Right, buddy? Who the fuck was that? What the fuck was he on about? Seriously, who was that? A wrestler? Oh, okay. Our next, our next roaster is from Iowa. 
a place known for corn, meth, and a really horrible band we all wish would just go away. Anyway, please welcome Corey Taylor. Thank you. Let me just say it's an honor to be part of a panel with so much talent. I'd like to thank the person with the biggest dick in the room for having me here tonight. Sharon, it's always a pleasure. And that's where all Sharon jokes stop. I don't want to be sued out of existence. You can tell Chris Jericho is stoked to be here because I can smell the aqua velva on his freshly shaved chest. Scott Ian's here, so that means Brian Posehn is, too. I'm surprised they're not fucking holding hands. By the way, it is completely and utterly rude of you to stare at my friend, Brian Posehn. Shame on you. As his friends, we know how unfortunate looking he is. But we have the good taste not to bring it up. Okay? As I said, Scott Ian's here, but fuck, he's always here. Scott Ian would play the opening of a fucking envelope. He's the only man I know who is far more handsome when he's made up as a zombie. Oh, fuck, I'll bomb up here. I don't give a shit. Yeah, it ain't easy, but I'll eat it up. I don't give a shit. I was surprised he could make it. I was sure VH1 would need him for I Love the Last 10 Fucking Seconds. Don't worry, Scott. You'll get another chance to talk about Kiss incessantly. Speaking of zombies, Duff McKagan's here. Duff McKagan's here because they couldn't get Gilbert Godfrey. Funny hair, weird voice, chaotic past, and he sounds like the duck on the Affleck commercials. Yeah, Duff's close enough. Right now, there's a flag at half-mast outside the rock and roll fantasy camp. Who the fuck? I'm proud of that one. I stand by that one. And then, of course, there's the one we're all here to destroy, Mr. Zach Wilde. First of all, I'm glad you dressed for the occasion. Your fucking superhero outfit. I didn't know Asgard was a suburb of New Jersey. You can't tell from the records he makes, but Zach really cares about music. I mean, he does it all. Guitar, piano, singing. Well, maybe not the singing so much, but uh, he does sound like a walrus with a scorching case of oral gonorrhea. But that's okay. You don't throw away a brand new car if it has a scratch on it, even if the leather interior smells like two bums died having sex in it. Then there's the obvious, the legendary boozing. You may think it's funny, but I've seen it firsthand. I can officially say I've seen Godzilla beat up a city. And I'm not saying Zach drank a lot, but one time he got a hooker wasted by peeing in her mouth. That one worked. Thank you, Eric, for that one. Ozzy Osbourne has repeatedly talked to Zach about getting help for his drinking. Think about what I just said. How fucked up do you have to be when Ozzy fucking Osborne tells you you have a substance problem? That'd be like Jim Norton telling you you're not funny. When a man the size of Texas, who has also imbibed enough alcohol to inebriate that same state's population, confronts you, there are only three things that you can do. You can shit, you can get fucked, or you can just hang out and enjoy yourself. And that's what I have done for the last 12 years. Zach, in all seriousness, you're one of my best friends in the business. I fucking love you. I'm glad you're still here. And I'm just glad to be here tonight. So thank you very much for having me, guys.
Hey guys, I'm American rock and roll recording artist James Durbin. Now you probably know me best as the attractive token metal guy from the last season of American Idol. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there tonight, but my career is actually going in a different direction than most of the dais assembled here tonight. And that direction is up. And one of the greatest joys of being on American Idol was getting the chance to play with one of your idols on finale night. So when the producers asked me to pick my dream tag team partner, I had to go with none other than Rob Halford and Judas Priest. And one of the other great joys of American Idol was getting to help out a down on his ass musician who hasn't worked in a while. I knew this was such a great opportunity that I made a list of artists in order of my preference from 1 to 100. So the number one choice for me was, drumroll, the legendary Engelbert Humperdinck. But he wasn't available. Fuck. So then we called Gary Strong. No dice. We rang up the remaining fat boys next. <laughs> then it was on a 70s love boat guest star, Chavo. John Popper's harmonica was in the shop. And then we got shut down by Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Wayne Newton was in Branson. Kaja Gugu were booked. Are you serious, bro? Cameo had an actual cameo scheduled. Pavarotti was dead. So was Falco. And so was Vanilli. Why doesn't anybody tell me this shit? I couldn't get through to Udo Dirk Schneider's guy. Bobby Dahl had a pottery class? Striper has a church commitment, for heaven's sake. And we even got nose from John Oates, Garfunkel, and even that other guy from Wham? Ugh! We couldn't even get the guy from Collective Soul to go, Yeah! Or the Crash Test Dummies guy to go, 99 was Soleil Moon Fry from Punky Brewster, and then finally, Finally, we got lucky number 100, we got Mr. Zach Watt. So we performed the song that I really preferred doing with Sammy Hagar, and the rest was idle history. Now I hope that performance in some way got you back in the game, bro. I love you, Zach. Stay metal, and more importantly, please, stay the fuck away from my family, because I have cameras now. God, that poor little boy. Anyway, um, James, uh, he was about as heavy metal as my used old panty liner. Anyway, the next guy is an insignificant little prick. I can't even call him has been, because he's never was been. Um, and actually, I'm looking forward to hear you fucking talk. Um, his name is Jim, whatever the fuck it is, and um, do you want to come up here? It's your time now. You. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. I appreciate it. Um, I don't know if you guys know that Sharon is known in this business as a pit bull. That's because without the plastic surgery, she looks like one. I don't know if you noticed, Sharon actually went out trick-or-treating for Halloween this year. Lucky for her, she didn't have to wear a costume because she went as a cunt. Sharon recently said on the Howard Stern show she likes anal sex. Come on, Sharon, do you and Ozzy even have sex anymore? Ozzy comes about as often as a new Guns N' Roses album. And there's no way Sharon would swallow unless Botox came out. Check out this dais tonight. I was hoping to see a who's who of metal. This is more like a who cares. You notice the shitty day is when this roast took a major hit when Stone Cold Steve Austin couldn't make it. I mean, look at all these people up here with problems with drugs and alcohol up here. Zach, Corey Taylor, Jim Norton, Duff, all in one room. If Dr. Drew was here right now, he'd start jerking off. What a bunch of pussies on this roast. D Duff did a reality show with his wife. Zach did American Idol. Jericho did Dancing with the Stars. 
How sad is it the person up here with the biggest set of balls is Sharon Osbourne? <laughs> and there's Scott Ian, still looking like a retarded Harry Krishna. It's good to see you. <laughs> you know, my girlfriend told me I got anthrax in the mail yesterday. I was afraid it was one of Scott's albums, but luckily it was only the disease. <laughs> I'd rather inhale anthrax than listen to it. I love the beard, Scott. It looks like you just blew a werewolf. <laughs> you know, as great as a magician Scott is, he'll never get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's because there's a sign outside that says, you must be this tall to enter the building. <laughs> Scott, it's great you made it here tonight. Don't forget to thank Mr. Wonka for giving you a night off from the chocolate factory. <laughs> You could put Corey Taylor's name in these jokes, too, so. Look, Scott appreciates the small things in life. His feet, his hands, his torso, Zach Wilde's penis. Chris Jericho. Now, Jericho is like MySpace. He's still around, but nobody gives a fuck. You wrestle around with other men for a living, you have frosted tips in your hair, and you did dancing with the stars. Is there any time during the day that there's not a cock in your ass? <laughs> Clay Aiken is more manly than you. The last time I was around a pussy this big, I was in the back of Courtney Love's tour bus. Chris Jericho is like the Justin Bieber of heavy metal. You're Canadian, you've got a shitty haircut, and nobody believes you can knock up a woman. Oh, and your music sucks. Jim Norton's here. Don't worry, Jim, I'm not gonna shit on you. I know you got professionals do that for you, so. You know, both Jim Norton and Brian Posehn are here tonight. That explains the Amber Alert. What can you say to Jim Norton he hasn't heard before? How about that sex was consensual and I won't be pressing charges? <laughs> and because Norton needed a ride to the Grove tonight, Brian Posehn is here. If Peter Griffin from The Family Guy fucked a baked potato, the baby would look just like Brian Posehn. Brian Posehn loves to crank metal music while he's having sex. That way he can't hit the rape whistle. Fuck that. Look, I'm not saying Brian Posehn is ugly, but I went to a strip club with him once, and three, girl, three girls got off stage and enrolled in college. <laughs> Mr. Corey Taylor. What's the difference between a Loch Ness Monster and Slipknot having a number one hit on the charts? There's a chance you might see the Loch Ness Monster someday. <laughs> you know, Corey recently said in an interview that he's looking forward to creating an album that no one wants him to make. Well, you could pretty much say that about every album he's made. <laughs> you know, Corey wrote in his book that he was raped by a man when he was a boy. No wonder he's so good at screaming. He wrote it. I don't know. I didn't fucking rape the guy. <laughs> Shit, he put it in his book. Was he any good? <laughs> Is that why you guys wear the jumpsuit? You cover the blood, it's still bleeding your ass? <laughs> and there's Duff McKagan. Poor Duff, you know? When you hear that a member of Guns N' Roses is going to be here somewhere and Duff shows up, it's like turning on the Three Stooges and seeing Shemp. <laughs> you know you could tell Duff isn't very smart. In Guns N' Roses, he was tired of dealing with an unstable singer, so he went out and started Velvet Revival with Scott Weiland. <laughs> I mean, that's like a guy who doesn't want kids fucking the Akamom. Axl Rose, Scott Weiland, Duff's been around more dickheads than Sharon's mouth. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. 
I... You know, and look, D Dust Band recently opened for Guns N' Roses band Loaded. I mean, that's gotta be a little uncomfortable, huh? I mean, that's like holding the video camera while your ex-wife fucks the Lakers. And now we're here for Mr. Zach Wilde. I don't know if, you know, look, Zach was born in New Jersey, which makes him the smelliest thing to come out of that state since Snooky's vagina. You play with Black Label Society, Pride and Glory, and Ozzy numerous times. You've had more bands around you than Sharon Osbourne's stomach. Look, it's not easy being a metal guitarist. Think about it. The last time there was a number one metal song, Scott Ian had hair, Duff McKagan was in Guns N' Roses, and Sharon Osbourne had her period. <laughs> Zach wanted to shave his beard, but Ozzy said her mind about Sharon's pussy, especially the braids. Zach recently realized he was an alcoholic, then he went on American Idol, and we all realized he was a faggot. I don't know what's gay, going on American Idol, actually knowing how to braid your own beard. Zach dresses like a biker. Let's be honest, he doesn't ride hogs, he fucks them. Look, there's no doubt you're a living legend. I just want to know how. How the fuck are you still alive? This guy was so fucked up, Amy Winehouse used to be his designated driver. Zach, dr Zach drank so much beer, he's the first man to ever get a yeast infection. Zach's, li Zach's liver is so used to getting beat up, it's dating Chris Brown. Finally, I'd like to get serious for a second, and I give thanks to a man who's been in such an inspiration to me, and I'm sure to all of us in the room tonight, right? His long career in heavy metal, he's an incredible guitarist, an amazing singer, and his contribution to music will inspire and influence heavy metal fans for generations to come. Exactly. So I say thank you, James Hetfield. And I'm gl glad you weren't here to sit through this bullshit for what the hell is his name tonight. Thank you, Zach. You're fucking awesome. G. I play guitar for Ozzy Osbourne and Firewind. Uh, I'm honored to be a part of this Zach Wilde roast here tonight. It's funny because, uh, you know, Ozzy told me I could be, if I wanted, the next Randy Rhodes, the next Tony Iommi, even the next Jake Lee. I said I'll take the job as long as I'm not the next Zach Wilde. You know, I grew up actually learning all your riffs and solos, then I learned how to play actual music. <laughs> Fuck man, I can't believe Ozzy paid me double to do your old job. Actually, paid me half. <laughs> Alright, I'm done with this man. Fuck. Fuck. Job, Gus. Sorry you couldn't be here tonight. But as a Greek man, I know that while it's hard for you to dish it out, it's very easy for you to take it. Actually, he went to a hummus convention, so he couldn't make it tonight. Anyway, the next gentleman is a 
proud recipient of my old face. <laughs> He's really let himself go. Let's hear it from Mr. Duff McKagan. <laughs> Everybody's come up to me and said, sorry, Duff, you're such a nice guy. Fuck all of you guys. <laughs> Everyone here. You know, I, I, I'm not a comic. I don't have one-liners and shitty one-liners like these guys. I, you know, Zach's my bro. I've known him for a long time. And, and I want to tell a little story. A lot of you may have noticed Zach's beard and his unkempt style. You could say maybe he looks a little depressed. And I have a story, I think I may know why. And Zach, I hope you don't mind if I share this story. I, um, something, I, I, took, up, I took up mountain climbing recently. And I went to, to Scotland to go climb a mountain in the Highlands. And uh, I went to this little village there at the base of the mountain. And I set up my little camp and I, and I went up and I went to a higher place and I took my camp up there and I, I set it there and I came back down. And I went to this little pub in this little village there. And there's Zach behind the bar. He looks really depressed. I'm like, Zach, what the fuck? Nothing. Zach, you okay? Uh, well, you're working the bar here in this village? Uh, I don't want to talk to him. Zach, dude, you look really depressed. You can, you can tell me what's going on. I, no, I can't tell you. Zach, I've known you for 20 years. You can tell me. Oh, all right, I'll tell you. He looks out the window of, of this bar and he points at this church across the street and he says, you see that roof on that church, that slate roof? Yeah, that's a nice, nice roof. I put every piece of slate on that roof. Do they call me Zach the Roof Builder? No, they do not. Oh, okay. You see the, the stained glass windows in that church over there, every piece of lead and piece of glass in, the, in this church? I put every piece in that church. I made every window in that church. They call me Zach the stained glass window maker. No, they do not. But you suck one cock. Thank you very much. Zach, I love you. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass! Now well, that's a nice tasty beverage. Hey everybody, if you don't know, you should know. My name is Stone Cold Steve Austin and uh... Yellow. Yeah! No, I can't talk right now. I'm doing a little thing about Zach Wild. You know the one I told you about? Yeah, he's a real piece of shit. Okay. We're all here to tell warm, fuzzy, bullshit stories about what a great son bitch Zach is. Oh, he's a musical genius. He writes some great lyrics. He plays a mean fiddle, as he always says. Oh, bullshit. And then, you know, I start delving a little deeper into it and reading some of your lyrics that you wrote. And I, who the fuck wrote this bullshit? This is from uh, Mama, I'm Coming Home. I understand it. You know, Zach was a big part in writing the song, as was Ozzy and as was Lenny. Yeah, I can't believe Lenny would touch this motherfucker with a 15-foot pole. Yeah. <clears throat> times have changed and times are strange. Here I come, but I ain't the same. Mama, I'm coming home. You took me in and you drove me out. Yeah, you had me hypnotized, lost and found, and turned around by the fire in your eyes. Well, I'm fucking damn near about to start crying on this shit, right? It's fucking emotional. I could be right, I could be wrong. Hurts so bad, it's been so long. Mama, I'm coming home. What the fuck is this? I mean, have you seen this tour bus? It's a two million dollar tour bus. Granite cannons, granite floors, cherry cabinets, all the bullshit. Well, guess what, Zach? 
There's a fucking shower on that bus too. When you get in that goddamn shower, hit the bar of soap. Put a little water on it and rub it all underneath your armpits, around your balls and your fucking ass. So what do you smell a prick? Here's a tube of toothpaste. What you do is you pour some of this out on a little toothbrush and you scrub them fucking gimmicks in your, in your mouth. They're called teeth. Get all that yellow shit off of them. Your breath don't smell like a motherfucker. You understand what I'm saying? Deodorant. It's a miracle worker. You put it under your fucking armpits. You get me? You fucking Viking. Last but not least. Yo, trusty hairbrush. This thing does a goddamn wonders if you got the fucking hair. I ain't got no fucking hair. Comb that fucking shit you call a wig. You understand me? God damn, I'd like to sit here and just keep shooting the shit with the camera guy and the sound guy, but truth is, I gotta go take a big hairy dump. Fuck you, Viking, and... Hi, Barbara Ann. Love you. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Alright, let's hear it for, for Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> Who only fights for real when he's beaten up his wife. And now Zach is, you know, Ozzy couldn't be here tonight. He feels just terrible. But he, you know, he was very, very busy watching the History Channel. So he, he just couldn't leave home. Anyway, he has written you some very special words. Which, do we have them? Hello, Zach. I'm sorry I couldn't be here tonight, but I'm busy watching Hitler on the TV. Um, dropping you from my band was the easiest thing I've ever done. And that was mainly because I couldn't remember your name. It's been so nice not having you around. The tour bus doesn't smell like an orangutan's arsehole anymore. Even I find your hygiene offensive, and I'm the guy who used to sit around and piss all day. And don't let's forget the beautiful Barbara Ann. You know, she really loves you, Zach. But when you first started dating, she was very surprised to learn that a supposed master guitarist was so terrible at fingering. I saw that video <laughs> where you played the piano in a river. <laughs> it was a nice thought and really touching, but you needed a fucking ocean to drown out that shit song. <laughs> Congratulations, Zach. You're the first person ever being roasted by someone more famous than you. And that person is my wife. <laughs> I love you. Besides up, I love you, Zachy boy. I couldn't be prouder of you, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there for you. Love you, Ozzy. <laughs> I tell you what, I've, I've got to actually share with you. I'm quite relieved that Ozzy's not here tonight because I'd have only had to explain every joke to him. <laughs> Zachy, <laughs> it's your turn. You've taken quite a beating tonight and it's time for you to get us all back, okay? Get up here, come on. Oh, Father Scott, do me a favor, can you dance around that fucking thing for me, please, bro? Oh, come on, man, get that thing the fuck out of here. Come on. <laughs> nice. All right, All right, man. All right. Well, uh, obviously, I want to thank a bunch of people here before we get started with the, uh, the comedy here. 
Obviously, I want to thank Oz for taking a 19-year-old kid and taking a chance on him and making all his dreams come true. And then, uh, and obviously, hooking me up with all you motherfuckers and making it a complete motherfucking nightmare, obviously. I just want to thank the whole gang here for coming out. Uh, it's great to be honored here tonight. There's a lot of new faces up here, up on the stage and stuff like that, but uh, obviously, Sharon's is probably the newest. Uh, Mom, I didn't want to say anything in front of everyone, but uh, you want to take the, uh, the price tag off your chin, you can do that about now. But anyways, uh, I mean, what a bunch of nobodies we got up here. Brian Posehn is a get. Brian, I mean, I don't care what anyone says, you're really funny and talented. And I mean, it's really not your fault you have a face made for podcasting. Actually, I don't even know what the fuck podcasting is, but you got it there. Yes, just look at, look at Father Brian's face. It looks like a welder's fucking bench. It's been that way ever since he died at Great White's last gig. I mean, seriously, Brian. If you're here, then who the fuck is sleeping up in the bell tower, man? Come on. I mean, everyone knows Brian fronted a band at the 2010 Golden Gods. Oh, it was cool to see. You know, kind of at the time they let Corky suit up for the football game on Life Goes On. <laughs> Only like way more retarded. Yeah. Father Florentine. Father Jimmy over there. Dude, thanks a lot for coming down tonight, brother. Jim Florentine is proof that anyone with a New Jersey public school education and a shitty stand-up act can make it all the way to VH1 Classic. Florentine is one of the hosts of that metal show. A fine, fine program. A program hosted by three guys with the sex appeal of one fucking rapist. Thank you. Did you like that, Father Norton? The mighty, the almighty Father Jim Norton. Now what I want to ask here is, what is the difference? What is the difference between Jim Norton and a cancer patient? I'm just asking, I really don't know, I'm just asking. <laughs> and the, the crazy fucked up thing is Jim, it's, he's not bald, he shaves his head because he's a fucking racist. Yes. Scott Ian, Father Scott Ian. My favorite Irish Catholic rabbi rock guitarist. There's been a whole lot of ripping on Father Scotty here tonight. And I gotta be honest, I've kinda had, a, had enough of it. I mean, honestly, what did Scotty and ever do to anybody here? Seriously. Just leave this little fucking Jew alone. He fucking hates the limelight. Yes, yes, Father Scott is a fan of, of comic books. And uh, word is that they're even going to have a superhero based on Scott, Captain Shitty Guitar Player. <laughs> Father Scott, he's had a career. Back to Scott's greatness, though, he has had a career that has spanned three decades. I mean, honestly, that's not too shabby. That's three decades of kicking ass. Mind you, most of that has been spent on talking head shows, discussing bands that were ten times more successful than his. Father Jericho, Father Christopher, look at you, son. Look at you. Scott Ian's head is so shiny and smooth that if Father Jericho was standing on a tiny step stool right now, he could easily jerk off to his own reflection. <laughs> Father Chris, you're looking sexy, brother. I mean, I'm not saying you look gay. I'm saying, you know, your clothes, the hair, the self-tanner kind of make you look gay. Wait, you actually scratched that. What I meant to say was, I'm not saying you look gay. You are gay, son. Uh, I'm just glad that Chris approached this roast with the same dedication he brings to the wrestling ring. He dressed up like a flaming homo and had somebody else read his lines. But look at those choppers on Father Chris. His teeth are so white, you'd swear he was a black guy, man. Corey Taylor, the multi-talented, multifaceted Father Corey Taylor. As Corey's wife likes it when he wears that horrible mask of his when they're in bed. And I'll tell you why. So she can pretend she's being raped by Brian Posehn.
Father McKagan. Father Duff McKagan, my Irish coalition, black label brother. As in 1994, Father Duff's pancreas exploded. And at birth, his personality imploded. <laughs> Father Duff, you really are such a boring fuck. I mean, you were one of the last people to see Kurt Cobain alive when they sat together on a flight. Now, sitting next to Duff for four hours is enough to make anyone want to blow their fucking head off. <laughs> Father Duff, I mean, honest. How much do you pay Gilby Clark to hide in that bunker so you're not the least known guy at Guns N' Roses? <laughs> and how, in God's name, is it possible that you've aged less gracefully than Steven Adler? I mean, you need to get an appetite for reconstruction, son. Fuck using your illusion and just get a chemical peel, brother. I've had five of them, by the way. Now, now, Mom, my beloved mother, Sharon. I'd like to thank Sharon for hosting this thing. And by the way, Mom, you don't look a day over completely artificial. Sharon Osborne, Mrs. O, my mother, born in the land, down under. Oh, I'm not talking about Australia. I mean, this bitch was born in the bowels of hell in some way, crawled up here to hang out with all of us. Now, Sharon recently told Howard Stern she enjoys anal sex. Uh, it was kind of rather disturbing. You know, kind of gross. But uh, in Ozzy's defense, all these years he thought he was fucking their face. I'm, I'm sorry, Mom. I'm, I'm kidding. I mean, Mom looks great. But when she first met Ozzy, she really needed work. Come on. You know, kind of like Duff McKagan. Now, Father Duff, you know what I'm talking about. Mom, I sincerely appreciate everything you've done for me over the years. You've been a mother to me. You've always taken care of me. You've looked after me. And I gotta be honest, you were amazing tonight. And I thank you so much for doing this. I love you so much. And uh, let's give it up for Mars. You did such an amazing job. Actually, word on the street is Mom did such an amazing job tonight that I hear that they were offering you the hosting gig at the SAG Awards. Me and everyone else certainly think you have the tits for it. So I think you'll do great, Mom. And on that note, I'd like to thank Ozzy and Sharon, because you guys are the greatest. I'd like to thank all the roasters and all the people who sent in the corny-ass videos. I'd like to thank Barb, and hopefully I can taste what Father Shatner tastes like later on tonight. And I'd like to obviously thank all the Black Label Berserkers worldwide, Revolver and Guitar World, Music Cares, Epiphone, Marshall, EMG, Samson, Gunlop, E1, Eagle Rock, Monster Energy Drink, Monster Cables, and all my amazingly talented Jew writers. And I'd like to thank all my brothers up here, and my mother, and I'd like to thank the rest of our metal community family out there. You guys rule. Thanks so much. God bless, guys.